The one thing that I wanted to get across to the hunters out there is that this stuff did not come to me overnight and I realized the importance of understanding the behavior of the animal. We have to understand, like I said, how they're wired, what makes them do the things that they do. And the very fact that they've survived attests to the fact that whatever they're doing um, has kept them alive. Do they make mistakes? Do they always behave to a T to this? Sometimes not. Um, pressure, I want to make it clear to people, can uh, vary from definitely state to state. It can definitely vary from county to county, but it can also vary from property to property. But by being aware of what very uh, intense defensive behavior is and being able to recognize intense defensive behavior, then you understand right away. I mean, I can walk onto a piece of property of a client's and, and usually in not too long, an hour or so, uh, make an assessment of how much pressure the deer are under because of how the bucks are behaving. Um, their behavior is everything. If the bucks are, uh, you know, in my opinion, bedding in high-risk locations, if they're not really following the, the super defensive uh, tactical mode of, of their behavior, then I make the assumption that they might be under midline pressure to low pressure. But you also got to realize that when people are retrieving cam photos, when they're retrieving all this information and they're looking at it, there is one important equate, uh, part of the problem that's missing. You know, it's, trying, it's like trying to open a safe with only three of the numbers or only two of the numbers when it takes three. And that number is, is we have to add a hunter into the, the formula to understand how we're going to take their life from them. The big pressure buck is not going to give us his life. We're going to have to take it. So if you want to know more about how to tactically approach shooting these deer, we have literally years of information here and hundreds of videos that we're going to be doing. And we're going to pick it apart. We're going to take it slow. Like I said, I wanted to present these problems that we presented today so that the hunters would understand that I've been in their shoes. I have fell for these very same things that these guys are falling for all over the place. Uh, um, a lot of my friends have come to me and showed me their setups and I've showed them instantly where they're going wrong. And once they changed their tactical approach, why they had success. So try to keep in mind that, you know, this is a lot of experience that I've had here, a lot of years of studying them. I backtracked hundreds of deer on snow. This was huge. The backtracking the deer on snow, cross-referencing it to the wind when the tracks were made, has literally unveiled, taken the blinders off my eyes and told me and showed me what these deer are doing. Now, here's the thing. Anybody can be presented with a problem. You're driving down the road, you have a flat tire, you got a problem. If you have a spare with you and a jack, you're all set because you know the solution to the problem. If you don't have a spare and a jack with you, the problem's complicated. Worse yet, if you're somebody that doesn't know how to change a tire, then you're even in, in, in worse shape because you do not know how to solve the problem. Being able to solve the problem and know that tactically you're correct and knowing that the deer, how they're supposed to behave when they're under extreme pressure, let you know what approach and what depth of the approach that you have to use to, to shoot them. Now this may sound a little bit uh, a far fetched, but I have actually run into deer where they were betting certain situations where I have said to myself, this deer is impossible to shoot right here. And that's because he has absolutely everything on his side. I can't enter, I can't exit, I can't beat him with the wind. He's in a perfect location. And, I ha and, and it happens a lot more often than people think. So do I try to fight that? I have some tactics that I pulled that 
helped undermine this when I run into it. But for the most part, no, recognizing when you're beat and when it's a low percentage spot is just as important as recognizing when you have a high percentage spot. You have to know what to do. And once you know what to do and you kill your first big buck by knowing what to do, by applying the tactics that I'm going to show you and having it happen and come together for you is huge because that begins to build faith in yourself, in the systems that we, that we use to, take, to pick these bucks apart and eventually it just becomes something that is automatic. Randy and I, while we were scouting in Yankee Springs earlier this year, and we were looking at things on the snow and stuff, and just different situations, and as I was explaining to Randy, Randy understood quite a bit of the stuff that I was talking about, but some of the stuff he told me that he had never heard of, and that uh, he said, Bill, you, you, you know so much about this, these things that you're, that you just take for granted. Well, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that I just naturally do what I do. So it's actually been a little bit of a challenge for me to put these videos together in a digestible format and something that kind of makes sense. You know, a lot of deer hunting is common sense once you understand their behavior once you understand how they're shifting their senses and all the things that we just talked about. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and move on to some problem solving. And uh, we're going to take each one of these different situations that we just did, and I'm going to show you at least a reasonable solution. And most of the solutions are identical. But it takes homework, it takes scouting, it takes master stand placement, it takes a great scent program, and it takes uh, a lot of different things. But we're going to cover it all, and I hope you guys can uh, really, you know, understand it. And here's the thing. If you don't, email me. Call me on the phone. I'm here to, to, to be talked to. Uh, part of Being part of Pressure Deer Pro is a lot more than just going to a website and watching this stuff. If you don't get it, get a hold of me. We'll make sure you get it. That's my job. I want to help hunters understand how to tactically pick these, these deer apart. And as you can see, um, you know, from my room, I've done it many times. Uh, if I told you that every one of these deer were shot by plan design, I'd be lying. But I'm telling you that I'm shooting more and more and more and more deer through uh, plan design. So uh, have a great day. Uh, if you get a chance to and want to join Pressure Deer, we'd love to have you on board. Um, this site is about education, teaching hunters how to properly, tactically approach their, their hunting. And will every setup work? No. But as with me, with every year, you know, I set up, I set up, I set up, and then bang, one comes together. And it's just a beautiful feeling when a plan comes together.